Yes. Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'm pleased to stand and share with you the significant economic contributions of Bruce Power's multi-year life extension program that will provide low-cost electricity to Ontario families and businesses to 2064. Bruce Power's investment program supports 160 supply chain companies throughout our province and secures 22,000 jobs annually from operations in communities throughout Ontario. The refurbishment of Ontario's nuclear fleet and all the units at Bruce Power are critical to the province's energy future. Bruce Power generates 30 per cent of Ontario's electricity at 30 per cent below the average price, and unlike other sources of generations procured, the refurbished nuclear output from Bruce Power is cost-competitive and clean. I want to commend Bruce Power for using a model that works, refurbishing their units to secure our energy future and generating low-cost power that is clean for our families and businesses to count on both today and decades to come into the future. And I'm also pleased, Speaker, to share with you that Bruce Power and the counties of Bruce, Gray and Huron have teamed up to establish the Regional Economic Development and Innovation Initiative to leverage economic opportunities for local communities. The program will assist suppliers in locating to the area and access a range of resources to ensure even greater economic contributions to the region. And, Speaker, I stand here today committed to supporting the important role Bruce Power plays in Ontario, in Ontario's energy sector, and I look forward to their continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kenora Rainy River. While Northern families were encouraged by the government announcement to create 100,000 additional childcare spaces, they are concerned about the lack of firm commitments. In the North, having safe, affordable and flexible spaces means being able to recruit and retain professionals in our small communities. It means the ability to hold on to doctors, nurses and other professionals and to enjoy robust tourism and service industries. The reality is that with costs continually rising on everyday essentials such as housing, hydro bills and food, two incomes and affordable childcare are required to keep families afloat. For families working in the forestry, mining and tourism industries, as well as those working in the health and service sectors, flexible childcare, that is care that is available where and when families need it, is imperative. On a personal note, I can attest to the need for affordable, flexible childcare. As one of the fortunate families who can afford the high cost of full-time childcare, I still found the $231 a day cost for flexible childcare in Toronto to be totally out of reach. In fact, I can confidently say that access to affordable and flexible childcare has been the single biggest barrier I have faced as a woman in politics. I know that my struggle is not unique, but it is one that is shared by countless women and men all across this province. If this government is truly committed to creating a fairer and more prosperous society, it will work to immediately create more affordable, full and flexible childcare spaces. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> Brother Member Davis, the member from Kingston in the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On April the 2nd, I joined 427 participants for the 21st annual Kids Inclusive Run at Queen's mm. University. As one of 21 children treatment centres in Ontario, Hotel Du Hospital's Kids Inclusive program offers important services to children and youth with physical, neurological, or developmental disabilities such as cerebral palsy or autism. Kids Inclusive offers clients regular home visits by an infant and child development consultant, deve developmental screening and assessment, play-based developmental activities that meet the child's needs and provide invaluable information and support. The money raised helps families purchase specialized equipment, lifting devices and home renovations or van adaptions. I'd like to extend a very warm acknowledgement for all those who came out to show their support for this great cause. I'd also like to give a special thank you to Director Margaret Van Beers and her team for all of their hard work in organizing this wonderful event. The Kids Inclusive Run is a fun and healthy way to raise money for children with special needs and their families. I invite you all to learn about the incredible stories the youth and their families who have benefited from this first-class program and the services provided at Kids Inclusive. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. 
Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you and good afternoon, uh, Speaker. I rise today to offer congratulations for the accomplishments made by Nipissing University of North Bay. A recently released report looking at key performance indicators placed our own Nipissing University among the top schools in Ontario. The university had the highest percentage of graduates securing employment two years after graduation. At 95.7 per cent, that's more than 2 per cent higher than the provincial average. As well, 90.8 per cent of graduates secure employment six months after graduation, more than 3 per cent above the provincial average. Uh, the university continues to be respected for its high-quality education and overall student experience. Speaker, an impressive 93.6 per cent of Nipissing students were either satisfied or very satisfied with their time at the university. That puts the school 6 per cent above the provincial average of 87.7 per cent. And Speaker, I'm also delighted to share that the Mike Harris Learning Library at Nipissing University and Canador College just had their one millionth visitor. Oh. And I would like to again congratulate Nipissing Unity University for their outstanding performance. Thank you. <clears throat> Further members statements. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise this afternoon uh, to raise a, a large concern for the constituents in my riding of Windsor West. The concern is directly related to uh, a company, uh, Sterling Fuels, who was issued several uh, health and safety orders uh, regarding the storage and, and the use of um, hazardous materials on their property. Now, the interesting thing about this issue is that Sterling Fuels is located on federal land, um, but there have been work refusals. The workers, and as anybody in this House should know, it's very difficult for workers to come forward when they feel that there are health and safety issues, when they feel like their work environment is unsafe, when they feel like they are personally at risk. They don't want to come forward and raise issues because they're afraid of repercussions, and in some cases, they're afraid that they are going to be fired. Uh, but the workers at Sterling Fuels have raised these issues time and time again, and Sterling Fuels um, continues to not meet the expectations of regulations and laws, um, and it's putting not only the workers at risk, it is putting the people in my community at risk. So those that work within the facility have actually said that if uh, the storage tanks that they're using to store these hazardous materials, so they deal with marine fuel and they deal with uh, curing agents for asphalt, if they're not labeled correctly and, they're not a, um, and there was uh, an issue where there was an explosion or fire, even our fire department is at risk because they wouldn't know what it was that they were trying to be putting out and saving our community from. So I'd like to bring it, that to the attention of the provincial side to work with their federal members to address the safety issues. Thank you. Thank you. Are there member statements? The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As you know, Foodland Ontario is going to be celebrating 40 years uh, this Thursday, and uh, with this celebration of the wonderful foods that are grown in Ontario, it's important for us to connect our hardworking farmers with our green grocers in our neighbourhoods and our constituency. I know people sometimes don't think this is important, but you know, food is critically important. Safe tasty, fresh Ontario products, and at great prices, Mr. Speaker. Like my colleagues here don't appreciate the fact sometimes that you can buy a 10-pound bag of potatoes, which I did on Saturday at uh, Lady York Foods, 10-pound bag of potatoes from Bradford, from the Gwillimdale Farms, $2.99 for a 10-pound bag. Wow. I bought a 10-pound bag of uh, beets locally grown up there in the Holland Marsh at Bradford. Again, Two fifty-nine, ten pounds worth of beef. People love the safe, high quality of Ontario products grown locally. So you create local jobs, not only in the farms but also in the green grocers. Like I have fantastic green grocers, like Zito's Marketplace, family run, Lady York Foods on Dufferin, family run, fresh Ontario products. You don't have to buy the expensive American cauliflower for ten bucks a cauliflower. Buy local potatoes, local beets, local squash. Enjoy local, live local, and the pages have got to know. Ask your parents to cook local. 
Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Halliburton, Court of Lakes Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 100 years ago, on April the 9th, 1917, the Canadian Expeditionary Force stormed Vimy Ridge. Over 100,000 Canadians from coast to coast and all segments of society took part in the three-day-long battle that would leave a lasting imprint on our history. The storming of Vimy was a truly Canadian endeavour, planned and executed entirely by Canadians. It was an operation to demonstrate the Dominion of Canada was a full-fledged member of the Allied forces. We pulled our weight on that day and earned Canadians' long-standing reputation as courageous warriors and reliable friends. Many members of the CEF came from the counties of Victoria and Halliburton and from my village of Kinmount. My grandfather, Wallace Scott, was one of them. He was among the proud Canadian soldiers who went over the top at Vimy on April the 9th and was severely wounded. But like many other wounded soldiers, he recovered and returned to service, fighting right up until the end of the war. Vimy Ridge turned out to be a major turning point in Canadian history. It ignited a newfound sense of national pride. Soldiers from all over our vast country pulled together, put aside their regional differences, and put duty to their country first, and the CEF earned a reputation as shock troops, the finest units in the entire Allied Army. On April 9th, let us all salute the soldiers who served our Canadians at Vimy Ridge and beyond and mark this important moment in our country's history, lest we forget. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday was an exciting day in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, not just for my community, but for the entirety of the former city of Etobicoke and indeed for the West End of Toronto and even Mississauga. Mr. Speaker, as much development as we see uh, in the city of Toronto and the GTA, it's hard to believe that at the western terminus of the Bloor Danforth subway, there's 14 acres of vacant land. And what we heard yesterday was the city's plans to finally redevelop the old Westwood Theatre grounds, uh, reconfigure the Six Points uh, interchange that's called Spaghetti Junction into a normal uh, pattern of local streets that will attract people to walk and ride their bikes there. And that was also coupled with great news at uh, Kipling Subway Station. Uh, Mr. Speaker, about the Kipling Mobility Hub finally moving forward, integrating TTC, Go Transit and Mississauga's MyWay system together. An example of all the levels of government, different municipalities working together in partnership with good planning to ensure that we have vibrant communities that we can live, work and play in. Mr. Speaker, the, the Spaghetti Junction uh, there uh, is a place that people love driving through. It will now become a place where people go to. And in those places, we'll be having restaurants where we can eat that wonderful locally grown produce that my colleague just spoke of. Mr. Speaker, it was a great day in Etobicoke Lakeshore, and the best is yet to come. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Elgin Millsex, London. Speaker, April each year is Be a Donor Month and is recognized during the month of April. Its purpose is to highlight the importance of organ and tissue donation. Currently, there are over 1,600 Ontarians waiting for a life-saving organ transplant. Every three days, one of these patients will die from not receiving their transplant in time. Many of us realize the importance and significance of donating our organs and tissues, but only 31 per cent of us are registered donors. Registrations is easy and can be done by anyone over the age of 16. One organ donor can save up to eight lives and enhance the life of 75 with tissue donation. Organ donation has helped over 13,000 people. Speaker, if you're unsure of signing up, please note that it's possible to change or withdraw your donor registration at any time. Organ and donation, tissue donation in Ontario is possible thanks to the Trillium Gift of Life Network, a not-for-profit agency who works tirelessly to improve the life of patients through registered organ donation. Signing up is easy and only takes two minutes. Consider registering, Mr. Speaker, yourself online today at www.beadonor.ca and help spread the word. Thank you very much. I already am. In case you needed to know, I already am signed up. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore now time for.
reports by committees.